This is a Full and Bloom interview with producer engineer Bill Matoyer. Inside the EP, Slayers Haunting the Chapel. More info at fullandbloom.com. Pretty soon after Show No Mercy, uh, Show No Mercy has done quite well considering it's on an indie label at that point, right? When you go in to record Haunting the Chapel? Yeah. Um, I think I might have told you before that uh, Mr. Slagle was very wise and that uh, he didn't wait a long time between any of the Metal Blade releases. Just kept the Slayer down people's throat. So it was pretty soon after we went in to do DEP. And, you know, it was the same situation. There wasn't a lot of money. I do believe that this time I, I, I did get paid, so I don't have points on finding the chapel. But again, it was the same thing. We'd go in uh, a lot of times uh, very late night, maybe even midnight, and uh, it was another thing that was just pretty much banged out. And, it's at the exact same studio, right? Track record studios? Yeah. Exactly. I'm assuming you got it done in a week, if you did Show No Mercy in a week. It was basically the same deal. We, uh, we were in and out with that one, too. And um, it, it still kind of surprises me how a lot of times when people talk about the back catalog, they don't, you don't hear much about um, haunting a chapel. It's, Call their show no mercy and hell awaits. It's like if you you see uh, somebody on Facebook just well, once in a while you find someone just praising that EP, saying that's when they really fell in love with Slayer was after finding the chapel. Yeah, I think it's when people so, uh, discovered, you know, because like I said last time, where it seems like everybody's always like hell awaits, but I always think. Uh, you know, I, I think that's must have been when they found them, you know? I mean, I found yeah. Show No Mercy immediately when it came out. I'm like, how the hell are they not into Show No Mercy, you know? That, to me, had more of an effect. And not only that, I think it was a better record. A Haunting the Chapel does have Chemical Warfare on it. It was on, like, a Guitar Hero game. Yeah. yeah. And that they, of course, still play it in their live set or, or did. Yeah, they played it the night Eric performed, the night that I went to see them. It's like they did two separate shows, but their last two shows were, it wasn't the same. But thank God I went on the, not the very last night, but the night before, and they did a lot of the old school stuff, which was pleasing to me, you know, shit that I worked on. So, Chemical Warfare was definitely one that they played. Do you have any memory of recording that song or anything stand out? Well, yeah. Um, there's two things I remember. I mean, number one, it was the first time that, that I really got just uh, uh, production credit. You know, Flagle was, was around a lot for Show No Mercy and, and I, I didn't get production credit for that, just engineering. Right. So this time it was just me and the band, and I got production credit. So, what, uh, do you remember what, do you have any info on what year that was, by the way? It's, I, it's 84, so it was released in um, June, so I'm assuming earlier in the year. Yeah. Like I said, we, we didn't wait very long before uh, we put that out. So, it was cool that, A, I was going to get... Uh, um, production credit. And obviously, Show No Mercy, you know, the, the, there was some pretty um, demonic uh, overtones to that album, right? Sure. And, you know, I was born and raised Catholic. I'm talking, went to Catholic kindergarten all the way through high school. Always. And then going to church and stuff, a devout Catholic. And I remember, like, even after Show No Mercy, after Show No Mercy, people would started to give me shit. Like, how can you be a part of this demonic stuff? And I'd be like, well, it's just, it's just music. And I go, I, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to these guys. I know these guys. I know they're not devil worshippers. They just seem to be able to write those types of lyrics very easily, that's all. 
So throughout all of Show No Mercy, I never gave a second thought to what they were singing about at all. And, um, you know, when it came to Haunting the Chapel, I had never heard any of the, the songs before we went into the studio. I didn't really know uh, what what to expect. So we go through the normal process. We do all of the recordings. Everything is done. It's time for Tom to do his, his uh, vocals. And I was sitting there and you know, press record. And the first words out of his mouth were, the Holy Cross, symbol of lies, intimidates the lives of Christian born. And I don't know why, but that, that just hit me, and I pressed up, and I'm like, what the hell did you just say? And he goes, he repeated the line, and I go, oh my God, I'm going to hell. I am fucking, I'm helping spread this stuff. I think I am going to hell. So <laughs> that is the one thing I totally remember about uh, working on on Honey the Chapel, but, you know, I, I thank God I, I got over that. <laughs> but yeah, that that sent the chill down my spine for some reason. The Holy Cross symbol of rise intimidates the novel vision board. That's hilarious. So you get over it rather quickly and start recording and record that line right away, or, or do you have to take a break oh, yeah, or what? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I didn't take a break. I just, I just went on. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what could you do? Sure. Well, at that what time, people took that stuff a, a little more seriously. Now it's like hilarious to look back on. But I remember I even had a buddy that um, I wouldn't say he was totally into metal, but probably more my influence. I'd gotten him to listen to Slayer. He was by himself and he's listening to Slayer. He goes, I just pulled over and I just threw the cassette out the window. <laughs> I had to, or like he was all fucking scared. I was like, bitch, please. Come on. Yeah. I mean, that was the shit that I liked about it, you know, but uh, I wouldn't raise Catholic, but I went to Catholic school and in that school we had to go to church and I did first through sixth grade. So I definitely had some of that, but I don't know if that was more rebellion, you know, that I've, I found that stuff totally cool. You know, like I said, told you was show no mercy when I saw Jeff Hanneman with his upside down uh -huh. cross slide and then. Kerry King with his upside down cross necklace and side one was six and side two was six six. I was like, this is the baddest shit ever. And they had the pentagram and everything. I mean, I was just like, holy shit, I'm buying it. But I know at that time, definitely people, you know, it was a little more spooky back then. Yeah. Honey the Chapel. It was the first time that I thought to myself, maybe I am fucking doing something wrong here. <laughs> You know, but yeah, it was a quick one. You know, it was just an EP, so it, it was in and out, no money, and uh, it still blows me away how how people listen to the stuff and still praise the stuff after all these years. Oh, they're classics, man. Um, regarding the drums, you didn't have to overdub the cymbals like you did on Show No Mercy. I think this time. We might, I might put him in, in a different room. Because I think what happened, again, not remembering too much. So that's why I'm scared to say this shit, because sometimes I, I could be wrong. But I think with Haunting the Chapel, instead of everybody going live like we have to with Sean and Mercy, we're able to just lay down the drums and then overdub. So I could put him in a room that wasn't so echoey. I could put Dave into the room that was uh, dead, and, and there was no symbol problem. So he went ahead and played everything. That's what I remember. And if somebody else tells you different, I believe them. Because, <laughs> well, it does say I think on Wikipedia that there's no carpet and that the drums were moving, and Gene uh, Hoagland was having to hold the drums in place while you recorded them. Well, from what I remember, that was Show No Mercy. Okay. You know, because Show No Mercy is in the, the that was the the place that that was uh, cement, basically. Yeah. So, like Show No Mercy, because everybody was playing at once. There was a, a the cement live room with a side sliding glass door that you could separate. You know, put the drums in there, and that way there was no bleed from the. 
the guitars and the bass that were set up in the, the room next to it that was better. So I thought for, for Haunting the Chapel, instead of them playing live, that we did the drums first, and I was able to put it in the dead room where that was, you know, carpeted and, and like that. But again, yeah. I would never rely on my fucking memory. <laughs> and I would probably trust uh, Gene's memory more than I. Too 